Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 18 of What If Naruto Was The Red X. If you guys enjoy this what if, and want to see part 19 of it, comment down below and let me know. Then go ahead, and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. Dim City Outskirts. The group of six had gone out and stolen from Luth Corporation, made their way back to the HQ. Dwila and Jinx were yet again, on opposite sides of the group, Dwila humming a nameless tune to herself, while Jinx looked towards her warily. So do you really think you can teach me some of that ninja stuff? Dani asks her new sensei, still in her ghostly form, and Naruto slowly nods his head in response. Cool. Dani may have been a samurai once, but I get to be a ninja. Dani says happily, Naruto blinking in surprise at the samurai bit. Wait, he was. When did this happen? Jinx asked suddenly and Dani sighed. When you have friends in the ghost zone, you learn a lot about my dad really quick. Ember, the ghostly rocker chick, and her girlfriends like hanging out with me sometimes, since I turned 14, and didn't shove them into a cramped little thermos, as soon as I met them. But as for the samurai thing, according to my other friend Desiree, dad once went back in time, and learned how to channel his ghost powers through a sword to fight my creator, when he tried to take over the past. Ironically, he did so in ancient Japan and even dressed up as a samurai. Dani explained with a shrug of her shoulders, and Jinx shook her head. It's amazing how many friends you can make when you don't instantly attack or hate on them. Gizmo notes and Dani nods her head in full agreement with the rather diminutive genius. Yeah. It's the same for Mammoth and his sister. Jinx notes and both Naruto and Dani look to her with raised brows. How's that? They ask at the same time and Jinx sighs. Mammoth and his sister are Australian, when their powers manifested everyone treated them like crap, one day, when Mammoth defended his sister they were both run out of town, even by their own parents. Jinx replied and Naruto winced, seemed like he and Mammoth both got the short end of the stick. So basically, every one of Mammoth's old friends, or even his relatives think of Mammoth, and his sister shimmer as freaks. Gizmo finished with a deep frown on his face, arms crossed over his chest. Poor guy. Donnie said softly and Jinx rolled her eyes. He's over it, and he's taken care of Shimmer ever since. He sends her money whenever she needs it, she comes and visits him and us during the holidays, that kind of thing. Jinx offers and Naruto slowly nods his head. So, do you think you'll be able to fix Blackfire's armor now, Giz? Naruto asks of his diminutive friend, and the tiny Terra frowned for a moment. Yeah, it won't be as efficient as Blackie's old armor, but with this baby, it'll be more than enough to restore her powers. Gizmo replies as they come upon their HQ, Naruto raising a brow, when he sees the open door. Anyone else got a bad feeling about this? Donnie suddenly inquired, and they all nodded their heads save a smiling Dwila, as she happily skipped over and inside the building. Honestly Temp, why do we keep that grinning psycho around? Gizmo suddenly questioned of his leader and Naruto chuckled nervously. Eh, because she's so crazy, that when she changes personalities she also changes her costume and method of attack, making it hard for the titans, to get used to her. Naruto replies and Gizmo blinks before slowly nodding his head, seeing how that could probably be useful against the titans. Walking into their HQ, they suddenly noticed Whale was grinning whiter than ever, and that all the other members of their team, were sitting on the sofa, Billy visibly pale. Alright who died? Naruto questioned Omi to suddenly be tackled by someone from off to the side, Dwila laughing loudly as he was. He skull face. The voice of one Halene Quinzel, aka Harley Quinn, said happily as the woman sat on him, Jinx screaming bloody murder as she ducked behind the sofa with white eyes, she could somewhat handle Dwila, but two clown girls in the same room, was just too much. What's her problem? Harley then asked and Donnie decided to answer for the frightened Jinx. She's afraid of clowns, apparently the Joker got his hands on her once. Donnie explained and Jinx squinted her eyes, while looking at Jinx, recognition suddenly appearing as she grinned. Oh yeah. Hi Jill. Harley offers with a wave, Naruto raising a brow. I remember now, we met back then, I was the clown girl holding the gun to your head. Harley offers with a wide psychotic grin, holding one finger to her own head, and Jinx screamed once more before jumping and hiding behind Seymour with white eyes. Harley? Naruto suddenly questioned with obvious shock, and some fear on his face, also wondering why Harley had held a gun to Jinx's head. Uh, how's it going? And why are you here? Naruto asked nervously, and then noted the woman was in costume, Batman's off copper colored belt around her waist, and seemed to be grinning whiter than normal. Oh shit, I left her that didn't I? He asked himself quietly, while someone cleared her throat. Well to put it bluntly, Harley over there wanted to visit. Came a different voice and Naruto looked past Harley and nearly had a monster nosebleed at what he was seeing before him. 
It was a woman, about Harley's height and age she guessed with pale green skin with beautiful chiseled features and full womanly curves, painted red toe and fingernails, deep red lips, her eyes were an odd glowing neon green color like Donnie's ghost form, and as she flipped her long blood red curly locks a sprinkle of pink dust wafted from them, her entire body looked almost like it was covered in what appeared like living vines, forming some kind of organic henna tattoo, leaves forming into a pair of panties, and an orange prison type shirt with the sleeves rolled up to her elbows, and the word and numbers Arkham 24 SP.7 7589922 on the back the words P. It's the Arkham Asylum on the right side of her chest, with only two buttons, done to close it over her impressive chest leaving most of her cleavage in midriff bare. Whoa. Naruto muttered while a shocked gizmo suddenly fell backwards, fainting, with a furious blush over his entire face, Donnie blushing with white eyes under her own mask. Uh, who are you? Naruto asks and the woman pouts slightly before smirking as she walks towards him with an obvious sway to her hips. Call me, Poison Ivy, Harley over there decided to bring me along for her little getaway. Ivy offered the blonde and Naruto gave a look to a grinning Harley, while Donnie floated towards the painted clown girl on top of him. Ah, uh, Harley right? Donnie asks her and Harley blinks before nodding her head. Think you can get off him, he's kind of got a girlfriend already. Donnie states and Harley grins down at Naruto, making him grunt in response. Way to go Donnie. He thought sarcastically as Harley pulled both herself and Naruto up to their feet. So Skull Face has him a girl. Aw oh, isn't that sweet red. Harley asks Ivy, while hugging the young blonde thief, the green-skinned woman rolling her eyes in response, before crossing her arms lightly over her chest. As she did, Naruto affixed his apprentice with a you will pay look and Donnie gave him a nervous grin. Harley, I don't really care, you're the one who knows him, not me. Ivy reminds blandly, Harley blinking and then pouting for a moment before grinning back towards Naruto widely. So who's the lucky babe you're dating then Skullface? She asks and Naruto twitches, and then quickly pushes himself out of her hug, while wondering why she insisted on calling him that all the time. None of your business, Harley. He states and Harley pouts, before grinning once more as she then waltzed on over to stand next to Will. Alright, now why are you two here exactly? Don't you have like, oh I don't know things, to do in Gotham or something? Naruto asks pointedly, and Harley places an arm over Dwell's shoulders, Dwell doing the same with a happy smile on her face. You said I could visit and you let her skull face, and do you know how often me, or Red get to go anywhere, the bats won't follow. Harley offers in reply and Naruto grunts for a moment, and then groans as he walks off. Someone showed them to a guest room I can't deal with them or their quirks right now I need some sleep. Naruto grumbles out, and Kid Wicked is the first up, and he bows to Harley for a second. So you're taking me and Pammy to a room den? She asks and Kid nods his head slowly. Alright then Red Eye come on Pammy, I'm B2, let's hit Dahe. Harley says with a yawn and Ivy rolls her eyes before following after her clown-like partner and the young kid Wicked. That was the single hottest pair of women I have ever seen. Private Hive suddenly says and gets nods from Seymour and for some reason even Danielle as well when he does so. Hot as hell and crazy as fuck. Billy offers in reply with Jinx and Blackfire nodding their heads, Jinx still hiding with white eyes. Someone needs to get Gizmo to bed. Donnie notes before looking around. Not it. She shouts as she flies away, hurrying towards the room Jinx set up for her. Sighing at this Jinx looks to Blackfire, the older, black-haired girl frowns for a moment before sighing and walking over to the laid-out tiny genius. Blackfire, Gizmo has a device that he needed to finally fix your armor with him, if you want you could finish it. Jinx offers and Blackfire nods her head, smiling as she made her way into the HQ. So now we have two of Gotham's hottest and most wanted villains staying with us for an undetermined amount of time. Dwell muses with a thoughtful expression before suddenly giggling to herself. Neat. Will then says with a laugh as she heads off to bed as well, the rest of the team soon following, and wondering what new hell would be brought upon them next. Titan's Tower. Cyborg Yon while walking towards the commons room of the tower, smacking his lips lightly, and rubbing his head as he does. Dude. Whose turn is it to make breakfast today? Beast Boy asks, while coming up beside his titanium-plated friend. You're up early. Cyborg notes with a raised brow, and Beast Boy chuckles nervously. I'm going on a date with my girlfriend tonight I wanted to make sure I'd have enough time to get ready. Beast Boy admits, and Cyborg looks at him for a moment before rolling his eyes as Raven floats towards them with Starfire. Ray? You're usually the first one up besides Rob, what happened? Cyborg gasped his female friend, and Raven twitched while looking to a brightly smiling Starfire. Star wanted details. She grumbled out, and Starfire chuckled nervously while rubbing her right bicep. Ah. Oh well, let's all get some breakfast, I'm making waffles. Cyborg announces and Beast Boy frowns towards him. Can they be non-dairy this time? He asks and Cyborg gives him a look that seems to say, what do you think? To the green changeling. So, you really made that suit without a security switch or anything? A female voice echoes out of the common room, all the titans blinking when they hear a nervous Robin answer. Ah yeah, I was worried that any kind of electrical discharge produced by Sheenathium might have a negative effect on the person in the suit. 
Robin admitted while Cyber turned to his friends. Did you guys know Rob was having a friend over? He asks and Star growls angrily before stomping towards the doors. Oh boy here we go again. Cyber then mutters and both Beast Boy and Ray are inwardly thankful their own significant others aren't as possessive as Starfire can be. Come on let's go and save whoever Robin's talking to from Star. Cyber then says, while walking into the commons room, Beast Boy and Raven shrugging as they follow him. However, upon entering the room the two find Cyber gaping and pointing and Starfire looking confused. Looks like they finally decided to come in, huh? A female voice quips and Robin chuckles. Raven blinks at this, then follows the gaze of her two friends, before her own eyes whiten as seeing a red-haired woman with blue eyes in a costume reminiscent of a bat. Bat. Cyber managed to get out, while Beast Boy jumped onto his shoulder and gaped towards the redhead. Batgirl. We have Batgirl staying here, in the tower. He demanded before launching over to shake her hand. Dude. It's like such an honor to meet you. Beast Boy says, and Batgirl bites her lip to keep from laughing. What's she doing here? I thought she worked with Batman or something. Raven asks with a raised brow and Batgirl nods her head. Yeah, I'm here on business, but I wanted to catch up with Robbie here. Batgirl says while nudging over to Robin the younger boy glaring at one of his oldest friends. Shut it Barb. He grumbles out lowly while Starfire floats over to the woman. I have never heard of you before, please, how's it, that you know Robin? She notes then asks the older red hat and Batgirl twitches, before crossing her arms and giving a look to Robin. Ah, uh, yeah, I never really talk about Gotham. Robin offers her, and Batgirl frowns once more, silently promising to get him for that. Right, but seeing as I'm here, let me see if your descriptions were accurate on your team. Batgirl says while looking to the red-haired alien princess. You must be Starfire. She notes and Starfire nods her head slowly. Then this one. She says while patting Beast Boy on the head, the green jester grinning. Is Beast Boy. That must be. She says while motioning towards a still completely shocked Cyborg. Cyborg. And last is Raven. She says while finishing and points to the set girl. Nice to finally meet you all, Robin's told me all about you. That girl says pleasantly and Starfire looks at the older red hat strangely. Please, are you Robin's older sister? You speak much like my own sister Blackfire did when she came to visit. She asks then notes and that girl and Robin look to one another, Robin blushing and clearing his throat. I need some coffee. He mumbles lowly and that girl shakes her head. Actually, we used to work together for a long time, I even used to threaten to take him shopping with me when we were little. She admits with a smile and Starfire blinks for a few moments. How is that bad? She asks and Batgirl gives her a look. I could take hours just to look at shoes and make him carry my stuff for me. She says with a smirk and Starfire frowns. Shoes are not that interesting to me. Starfire states and Batgirl shrugs her shoulders in response. I was 15. What do you expect? She quips in response, then looks over her shoulder to see Robin frowning towards his coffee. Anyways. She then says while turning back around to face the Titans. Ever since a little incident Batman and Robin haven't really spoken to one another. That girl admits before mentally glaring towards Robin. Not that it's really Batman's fault this time stupid stubborn Robin, he was only worried about you. She mentally grumbled while crossing her arms. Dude. What happened? They were the dynamic duo. The Cape Crusaders. Batman and Robin. What could have torn such a perfect team apart? Beast Boy asks with white eyes and Batgirl grimaces, while hearing Robin growl. Batman happens sort of. She admits and Robin scowls from his own spot. How's that? Raven asks while floating over, Starfire nodding her head, while a still stunned cyber just continued to point at Batgirl and gape. Oh well the Joker kind of shot him once. She admitted sheepishly and Robin twitched at Starfire's gasp. It was only my damn shoulder, and it only happened once. He shouted angrily once she did and Batgirl sighed. What about the time Two-Face nearly beat you to death, when you were still only 16? That girl asks flatly, and Robin growls towards the girl, turning and slamming his hand into a counter. I was young. He shouted before taking a breath, arms crossed and Batgirl sighed while shaking her head. This is why they broke apart. She states and Raven nods her head, seeing that it was more Robin that broke up the team than Batman at least that's how it looked. Please, so Robin once worked with both you and this Batman, why have we not heard more about you then? Starfire asks with a confused expression, and Batgirl turns to Robin with a frown. Dick, please tell me you haven't been wearing your mask 24-7, and not talking about who you really are. Batman is bad enough without you inheriting his traits. She asks then states flatly, and sees Robin try to sink in on himself. Dear Lord X was right, you are way too serious. And I actually thought he was only exaggerating about it. That girl grumbled lowly, and Robin blinked before gaping towards her. Wait, you actually worked with that thief? Why? He demands and Batgirl gives him a look in response. Because he was trying to help a friend of his though he did steal Batman's belt. Batgirl admits then mutters and Robin chuckles. I would pay money to have seen the look on his face. He states before turning back to his coffee and readying it. 
We have that girl in the tower cyborg suddenly shouts loudly with shock, and the set girl looks at him and blinks. What's with him? She asks and Beast Boy grins. He thinks you're hot. The green teen offers the red head, and she rolls her eyes. As if more than half of Gotham's men already didn't. She mumbles to herself while Robin nods his head, being a member of the particular half of Gotham that thought she was hot as hellfire. So why is she here anyways? Raven finally asks, and Robin takes a sip of his coffee before turning to face his team. Because, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy escaped from Arkham recently, Batman sent Batgirl here to find them. Robin explains and Beast Boy gapes. Dude. We have the hottest villains in all known history in our town he demands, and Robin nods his head to his green teammate. Cyborg, did you hear that Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy are in Jump City as well? Beast Boy says in shock and Cyborg falls over backwards, obviously passed out. That's new. Raven observes and Batgirl shrugs. Too much shock in one day, we'll do that to anyone, and it's not too common for Gotham villains to leave town. She reasons and Robin and Raven nod their heads. Excuse me, but why are the Harley of Quinn and Poison of Ivy in our city? Starfire asks the older Red Hat, and Batgirl shrugs her shoulders in response. To hell if I know, Red. She states and then blinks when she realizes what she did. Sorry I used to have a friend with red hair, and we'd call one another Red all the time. She admits and Starfire merely shrugs, not really that surprised by the nickname considering how often people used it with her. Anyways, I'm going to get to work on finding Ivy and Harley, Dick, think you can check some sources for me. That girl asks the boy wonder as he finishes his coffee and smirks. I'll go talk with the police chief and officer Connors, he's a lot more astute than a normal officer, and a hell of a lot better than Bullock. I'll see if they've seen or heard anything suspicious. I'll hit some of my other sources after that. He states while crossing his arms over his chest, and that girl nods her head. Well I'll look through the city directory for any empty botanical gardens, or joke shops they might have used as their hideouts. That girl states while moving over to the computer, Robin walking out the door, while Raven and Starfire look to one another. Is it just me, or are they really efficient? Raven notes and Starfire nods her head in agreement. They do seem to have done this before quite often. Star notes and both turn over to see Beast Boy fanning Cyborg. Dudes. Could you help me wake up Cyborg or what? He demands and both girls nod before helping their green friend. Tartarus HQ. Ismo woke up with a groan, and then lifted a hand to his head. What hit me? He wondered while looking around, and sees a smirking Blackfire, floating. Ha, huh, when did I fix your armor? He wonders and Blackfire merely rolled her eyes in response, before stretching out her limbs. The new segmented armor was nearly identical to her old armor, save the thicker plates that were on her biceps, and the redesigned forearm wrist protectors. It's not bad, kind of wondering why some of it is different. Blackfire says then asks, while looking at her hands and Gizmo frowns. Because I saw this one picture of Starfire in armor like yours, and based it after that. He grumbled and Blackfire raised a brow, before making an O with her mouth. This would be styled more after a thicker battle armor then, Starfire always used to wear hers more for actual protection after all. She notes before twirling around, and cracking her neck. Oh well, and by the way, you passed out, because you saw that poison ivy woman. Blackfire states and Gizmo blushes while wondering how one woman could be that hot. Also, I was the one who finished the armor, and now I'm going to go sunbathe in it to get a little energy back. Blackfire states before making her way out of the room, humming to herself while Gizmo slapped his face. I hate this, I'm in a base with some of the hottest women in the world, and all of them can easily wring my neck, and use me as a dartboard, why can't I catch a break, and not be around super power chicks. Gizmo wonders to himself, before sighing and making his way over to his workstation, bringing up the schematics for Batman's weaponry, before starting to modify it with Robin's and his own technological advances, with this, Temp will be tough enough to take out all those titans and those lame ass ninja permanently. Naruto slowly opened his eyes with a groan, moving a hand to his head as he slowly stood up. What hit me? He wondered to himself while standing up fully, looking around he noticed he was in his red X costume, but he had a long purple trench coat worn over it, what the hell? Naruto wondered, finding a few seals in the coat, most of which were stuffed with dozens of knives and exploding seals. Weird, wait, why am I in this coat? Naruto wonders to himself, before checking around his body, finding his sword was gone, as was his normal kunai and shuriken. Great, looks like someone kidnapped me and stuck me with an assortment of Joker knockoff stuff. Naruto grumbles to himself while placing his hands into the pockets of the coat though I do admit, I kind of like the coat, but it needs a better color than purple. Naruto muses before looking around his surroundings this time, wondering where the hell he'd managed to get himself. He appeared to be in Arkham, how he got there he didn't know, but what he did know was that the sky was odd, the moon was full, and yet the sky had turned blood red with black clouds floating above him. Odd talk about creepy. Naruto notes before noticing, that the place also seemed extremely different to the Arkham he'd visited. 
The mansion he'd seen the first time was still there. However, several of the buildings appeared to have been modified. He could see a botanical garden to one side, guard towers with lights here and there, several other buildings with guard towers here and there. And of course was the large locked doors everywhere, a dock to the opposite side of the botanical garden, eerie, nearly dead looking plants all around. And of course the place was surrounded by hills and cliffs, while the waves washed up against the side since it was on an island. And last but not least the eerie gates with the word Arkham on them were still present. Whoa, talk about renovation. Naruto notes, seeing as the place was even more guarded now than it had been. But it couldn't be Arkham, he'd only been there a month. Yeah, a month ago. Something fishy is going on. Naruto notes to himself before reaching up to rub the chin of his mask. At the moment, he was on a cliff, and upon looking down he spotted several guards. Frowning, the blonde hit a few switches on his belt, to bring up his HUD, thus checked how his suit was running. An added bonus of this being his suit's ability to scan and display the amount of chakra he had stored in his body for use. Thus the blonde was shocked to see he was at 5% of his chakra capacity, and that his suit was running on its backup. Not only that, but several key systems seemed to have been tampered with, and were locked for lack of a better word, leaving him with a pair of grappling hooks in his gauntlets, the scallop blades on them, and his normal X shuriken, all the rest of his gadgets and gear locked to his use. Oh fuck me what the hell happened last night. The blonde wondered to himself while shaking his head, then sighed before he saw a message come up on his HUD. Want to play a game? The message questioned and Naruto frowned. What kind? He asked then grimaced, how could someone hear? A fun one. The message printed out and Naruto's eyes widened. Where are you? He asked suspiciously and the message changed. Somewhere. It offered vaguely and Naruto grunted. Alright, what kind of game? He finally asks and another message pops up. Find the innermost chamber of the mansion I'll be waiting. The message states and Naruto looks over to the mansion with a frown. Well, might as well find out what the hell is going on here. Naruto muses before he looking around the main to grapple towards a guard tower. Zipping up to it quietly, Naruto lunges up and slams the guard's head into the side of the tower to knock him out. It'll be best if I remain undetected until I can either unlock my other gadgets or regain some of my chakra. Naruto notes with narrowed eyes, then spots an odd little device nearby. Walking over to it, Naruto reaches to it and holds it up. The device seems to be a digital recorder of some kind, with a plug for speakers or amplifiers to be plugged into it. <laughs> well it never hurts to know a little about the crazies around here, or it could always be guard routines or something, might as well check it out. Naruto notes inwardly, before reaching to his belt, taking a seat in the tower, and then plugging it into the device. The gem was born of evil's fire. A strange demonic voice echoed from the speakers in his helmet. The gem shall be his portal. The demonic voice chants out and Naruto shivers. Alright, I think that's enough of that. Naruto notes while unplugging the device. He comes to claim, he comes to sire. The voice continued, Naruto's eyes widening before he smashed the device, and then backed away from it. The end of all things mortal. The odd voice finished while Naruto shivered violently. Okay, even for me that registers like a 20 on the weirdo meter. Naruto thinks to himself, then turned on his heel, looking to the mansion. Naruto looked down and grimaced seeing men guarding the main doors. But, they have a vent shaft above them. If I could somehow reach that undetected. Naruto mused to himself, then saw the graveyard and frowned in thought. That does provide ample coverage for me, and it wouldn't be too weird to walk over the graves. Naruto notes to himself before quickly jumping back down from the guard tower and to the ground below. Landing in a little crouch, Naruto hides in the shadows of the tower, and then narrows his eyes as he looks around for any guards. Not seeing any, the blonde-haired Axonin quickly ran over to the graveyard and leaned back against the grave. Breathing a sigh of relief the blonde chuckled to himself. Wonder who I have to thank for the help. He wondered to himself, while turning to the grave, only for his skin to turn deathly pale. Here lies Uzumaki Namikaze Kashina beloved wife and mother R.I.P. The grave had read, and Naruto quickly shuffled away from it, his eyes wide and his heart thumping in his ears. Mom. He wondered then shook his head, quickly fired a grapple at the side of the mansion, and pulled himself to the roof of the building. Coming onto it, the blonde continued to shiver, even though he knew it couldn't be his mother, the sight of her grave still scared the ever-loving shit out of him. Breathing in shaking pants of breath Naruto looked around, wondering if he'd somehow gotten trapped in a Tsukoyomi, even though Itachi was long dead. What is going on here, why is everything going crazy? The blonde-haired shinobi wondered to himself before deciding he didn't want to know. Firing a grapple to the side of the mansion, Naruto quickly swung over to a spot above the main door. Crawling up the side of the wall, Naruto gently removed the grate above it, then crawled his way into the building. Coming out in a simple room, Naruto blinked upon seeing a door at the end. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? He inwardly wondered, before walking over to the door, and pulling it open. Blinking, the blonde found a hole, and then walked out into the hall and looked around. What the hell why does it feel like this really shouldn't be here? Naruto wondered before jumping when he heard a door slam. 
Damn it, stupid Baka, it's just the wind. Naruto chastises himself before turning to the door and opening it once more, shocked to find he came out in the hall once more, what the hell. He demands before turning around, thus backs away when he sees the doorway from before is now completely gone. T this can't be happening, this can't be happening. Naruto thinks to himself, seeing as the laws of physics, nature, and reality all seem to have been broken in the span of a few minutes why couldn't it be Murphy's law that was broken. Naruto inwardly grumbles before turning and running down the hall, hell bent on escaping this insane madhouse ugh, bad pun. Slowing himself down, Naruto placed a hand on one side of the hall and closed his eyes. What the hell is going on last night I go to bed in the HQ, then I wake up in Arkham what did bird brain catch the girls and me, and throw us all in here before I could wake up. No. That's stupid, besides that it wouldn't explain my chakra or how my suit's gadgets were locked, and the fact I have a coat filled with weapons and explosives that are native to Konoha. Naruto thinks to himself before opening his eyes, gaping when he finds himself in, of all places, outside of the Kyubi seal. Shit. Naruto mutters as a pair of bright red eyes open beyond a veil of shadows cast by the cage, a Cheshire Cat grin opening beneath them. What the hell do you want, furball? Naruto demands angrily and hears a deep demonic chuckle, but it's not from Kyubi. Such a disrespectful mortal. How can you stand the whelp Kyubi? The new voice notes and Kyubi nods, four glowing red eyes opening above Kyubi. True, but the Gakis is amusing, and at least he's not as troublesome as your daughter has proven to be, Trigon. Kyubi says with the roll of his eyes in Trigon's direction while Naruto backs up, then turns and finds himself face to face and mask to mask with Slade. I was wondering when you'd finally get here. Slade muses in a deep monotone voice, and Naruto turns back to the demons before glaring at the masked madman. Alright candy corn face, what the hell is going on here? Naruto demands and Slade looks at him for only a moment. You'll know soon enough. He answers cryptically before darkness suddenly claims Naruto, all things falling into shadow around him. Tartarus HQ. Naruto suddenly sat up in his bed with panting breaths, then fell back and placed a hand over his eyes. Ugh just a dream but man what's with these nightmares lately? I feel like I might have inhaled a truckload of the scarecrow's fear toxin or something. Naruto notes to himself while rubbing his face tiredly, then cracks open an eye and looks to the side. He sees the hour, thus sighs before rolling out of bed with a grunt. Slowly pulling himself to his feet the blonde stretched and yawned at the same time before walking over to his door. Exiting his room with drooping eyes Naruto yawned once more while making his way into the kitchen. Upon entering he turned and stopped at seeing Harley making what looked to be pancakes with a bob of her head. Now dressed in nothing but a familiar orange button-up shirt and black lace panties, dear lord Harley, must you be so scandalous as to dress like that around teenage boys? Naruto demands while rubbing his head, and the girl turns to look at him and blinks. Skull face. She asks and Naruto nods his head. Wow, and here I thought I was the only person who'd be out of costume around here, and you really are blonde. She notes with surprise and Naruto snorts, before seeing the drooling visages of his friends Mammoth, Kid Wicked, Private Hive, and Seymour, though he could easily tell that none of them were really hungry for food. Would you guys please stop staring at her like she's a piece of meat? Naruto growls out at the other males of his team, each of them turning to him and blinking, till his eyes flare red. I said beady. He shouts and the four quickly get away, and Naruto crosses his arms with a frown. Akman's full face, don't be so hard on him. I don't mind the looks that much. Harley states while turning her head to look at Naruto, the blonde reaching up to pinch the bridge of his nose before sitting down. I have to enforce a few rules around here Harl, one of them is not to stare at the girls on our team, which means not to stare at our female guests either. Especially when one of them controls butin plants, and would likely kill them, before allowing them to look at her, or her friend, like that. Naruto states in rebuttal, while rubbing his aching temples, while Harley looked at him confused for a moment before frowning. Why do you have to enforce that rule anyways? She asks and Naruto rubs his face for a moment. I'm on a team with numerous boys, two of which have super strength, most of which are just perverts. When they stare get perverted with the girls, I have to stop them or our teamwork will be shot all to hell. Naruto explains with a frown over his face while Donnie comes into the room, yawning and wearing her white PJs, before hopping onto a stool next to him. Hey, who's Dot Wapet? Harley then asks while pointing to Donnie and Naruto looks to his apprentice before sighing. This is Donnie, she had white hair last night because she's half ghost. Naruto states and Harley shivers, thus gaining a look from the blonde teen. I'm kind of afraid of ghosts. She admits with a shrug while looking at Donnie, and the black-haired girl rolls her eyes. Whatever, so sensei, what am I going to be learning first? Donnie asks and Naruto looks at her with one eye before nodding his head. First, you need a new villain name. He states and Harley grins. Oh cool. Can I help? She asks excitedly and Naruto looks at her for a moment. Sure, what do you got Donnie? He asks and Donnie frowns. The spirit. She asks and Harley sneers. There's an immortal dude with that name already toots. She states and Naruto wonders how she knows that exactly. Was there a magazine with information like that or something? 
How about Phantom? She asks with a thoughtful expression and Donnie growls low in her throat. My dad is Danny Phantom so no way in hell. She grumbles and Harley shrugs her shoulders. What about Spectre? Naruto asks and Donnie frowns. No there's a psychologist ghost named Spectre and she makes you miserable and then absorbs all the misery into herself. No offense, but I really don't want a name similar to hers. Donnie states and Harley shivers violently at the thought she was technically a clown after all. Poltergeist. Naruto offers and Donnie snorts. Do you even know what a poltergeist is? She asks and Naruto nods. A very territorial and vengeful spirit. He states and Donnie nods. Yeah, and I happen to know one, her name is Kitty, and you can piss her off really easily, especially if you're her boyfriend. Anyways, she gets angry really easily, and I mean even more so than me and comparing me to my dad ever could. Donnie explains and Harley frowns, before turning back to her pancakes, and flipping them to make sure they wouldn't burn. What about Revenant? I've heard dad use with ghosts and the like before. She asks then explains and Donnie raises a brow. Those are ghosts held to the mortal plane by something of value to them, no, that one really doesn't seem to fit. Donnie says and Naruto wonders how much the girl knows about spears and such. Hmm, definitely not Howler, Banshee or Siren. Naruto notes, having learned a lot about spirits and such from Raven. Frightened, screaming, and singing ghost soul sound bass so no, unless I pick up my dad's ghostly wail and call it a banshee scream. Donnie says, and then notes with a frown, while Naruto reaches up to rub his eyes. How about Yurei? He offers and Donnie looks at him. Yurei? She asks and Naruto smirks in response. Japanese ghost. Naruto offers the girl and she frowns. No? Yurei just sounds weird. She states and Harley blinks. Why not just Rei means solar spirit right? Harley offers and Naruto blinks for a moment. You speak Japanese? He asked the blonde woman strangely, and she nodded her head in response. Took a course during college, learned a little, not much, but I remember Rei meaning spirit. She states and Donnie frowns for a moment before nodding her head. Alright, Rei is. She states with a nod of her head, and Naruto looks around. Where are Jinx or any of the other girls? He wondered and Donnie snickered. Jinx is hiding in her room, said something about too many clowns for her to come out. The young gasoline girl responded and Naruto chuckled. I think Blackfire went out to sunbathe or something, and Will was using the holo room last time I saw her. Donnie then listed off and Harley blinked. Holo room? You mean a room with tons of holograms and stuff? She asks with a gaping jaw, and Naruto merely nods his head. Boy, what am I doing in Gotham, this town has everything. Harley states with a raised fist before suddenly sighing and looking forlorn. Well, everything except Miss Daje. She notes and Naruto slaps his face while Donnie shakes her head. Right wait where's that ivy chick, and now that we're on the subject why are you wearing her shirt? Naruto asks and Donnie blushes when a few ideas come to mind as to why she's wearing the red hat shirt. Oh let's not talk about the shirt thing, but as for red, I think she found a garden or something. Harley replies and Naruto blinks before frowning. Probably mine. He grumbles and both Harley and Donnie look to him strangely. What? He asks irritably and Harley blinks. The garden? Wow, will you never cease to surprise skull face? Harley asks and Naruto smirked in response. Most surprising ninja isn't just a moniker doll face. He quips and Donnie rolls her eyes while Harley laid out some pancakes. Never would have pegged you as being able to cook. Naruto notes and Harley snorts. I have to, Miss Tajay can literally burn water. And I do mean literally, I've seen him do it. She retorts before getting some syrup and pouring nearly a quarter of the bottle on her pancakes. Here you go. She offers handing the bottle to Donnie, the ghost girl looking at her strangely. Did you need that much syrup? She asks seriously and Harley shrugs. I like sweets. She replies and Naruto ignores that while pouring himself some syrup, then handing the bottle back to Donnie. Why does it not surprise me? Donnie asks and Naruto looks at Harley and shrugs his shoulders. Because she's a funny clown girl who seems almost childish. He offers and Donnie takes a mock serious expression. Hmm, true. She muses and Harley gives them both a look. Anyways Donnie, I'm thinking about starting you out with some basic shape manipulation. We'll start with that and work our way up, learning what we can and can't convert from my jutsu into your powers. Naruto offers and Donnie grins widely, seeing as the only person who'd ever really taken the time to teach her anything was her female ghost friends, and most of them were busy a lot of the time. Okay, sounds good sensei. Donnie offers cheerfully while Will suddenly flips into the room, looking around for something. Will are you seeing things again? Naruto suddenly asks and Will looks to him and then looks around nervously. No not this time. I'm just trying to keep you on your toes. She says while looking around, then reaches into her backpack and throws down a sphere, smoke and confetti flying everywhere, as Dwell seems to vanish. Skull face, where the hell did you find that chick? I really want one. Harley suddenly exclaimed with a wide grin, and Naruto rolled his eyes for a moment. Well to put it plainly, she seemed to have just escaped from a mental asylum when I found her. Naruto offers and Donnie mutters and of course, while Harley frowns for once. 
Oh, what's wrong with her then? She asks and Naruto shrugs. Bipolar and delusional, she seems to think she's the daughter of most of Batman's major villains. Thus far I've seen Two-Face, Penguin, Riddler, Joker, and even Catwoman Man I love that cat suit of hers. He replies and Harley looks at him for a moment before smiling widely. She really is the daughter I never had. She notes and Naruto shudders. Good, cause I'd rather not go through the joys of childbirth. Harley then says with obvious disgust at the thought and Naruto decides he'd rather not comment on that. Come on Donnie, let's get your training started while the holo room is clear, and maybe try to coax Jinx out of her room. Naruto says while getting up and placing his dishes away, then walks out of the room with Donnie following closely behind her sensei. As they leave, Harley then crosses her arms and leans back on her stool. Ha, what to do, what to do. She wonders to herself, before an idea comes to mind that causes her to grin monstrously. Oh boy. Now that sounds fun, I better go get red, we're having a girls night out for once tonight. Harley says to herself before flipping over to the door and running to find the garden. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification and also check out the other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.